Hey, well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Hey, it's Terry Bond Temps. Hey, ready for another broadcast and real estate, real talk. <laughs> oh, I got a great one planned for you guys today. <clears throat> Let me get my voice together here. I got a great one planned for you guys today. I got up this morning. I was up at three. I decided to go just lay down, couldn't sleep, and uh, got back up at four. Started prepping, and like I always do, and man, I tell you, I ran across something so unique that it got me all excited, more and above than what I wanted to teach you guys today. So today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about this hot topic, this hot topic that we've been talking about today for probably good, maybe two to three weeks now, and it's not taught anywhere else, okay? I'm going to teach you guys how to learn how to capitalize on this real estate mega trend and create yourself some some monthly income so what am i talking about you guys i'm talking about COVID 19. COVID 19 and the six d's okay you probably won't hear no nowhere else except for here where this conversation is being talked about COVID 19 okay and the six d's and what are the six d's the six d's are death debt divorce and distress death debt distress and divorce that's what COVID that's what's happening with COVID right now so many people have financial anxiety and it's affecting their lives okay and they're dealing with death debt divorce and distress the other two D's that I want to talk about or if you're a real estate investor and you're working this market you're working in this epidemic with this new hot topic that I'm talking about, then you can get a discount on these types of properties so that you can make some dollars. Again, this is the new way to make money in real estate. It's not new to me because I've been doing it for the last 19 years. Wow, isn't that something? I started in 2001. It's 2020 right now and it's called COVID-19. I've been working this distressed real estate market for 19 years. This epidemic is called COVID-19. Wow. I got to say that again. It's 2001 when I first started buying loans from banks, helping homeowners in foreclosure keep their home. It is 2020 right now. This program that I've developed and worked on is still relevant. It was relevant through the Great Recession of 2008. And here we are in 2020. It's going to be relevant for the rest of our days. Again, I started in 2001. It's 2020. That's 19 years later. And we're dealing with COVID-19. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. So again, you guys are getting it first. You're getting the education. But are you going to take the action to get the results? Are you going to take the action to get the results, to take advantage of this market and this opportunity? Or are you going to watch it go by and wonder what happened? Are you going to watch this opportunity go by when plenty of people have houses that they have no idea what to do with? And people, you should know that the predominant way that wealth is made in this country is by real estate. So here we are in an epidemic where people don't want their houses. They don't want their houses because they're not emotionally attached to them anymore. There's other things in life that have more value to them and have more meaning than that house that they're living in. You won't understand this until it's happened to you. I've lost my house to foreclosures. I gave one house away that I lived in for 18 years because it didn't mean a thing to me. It was just four walls. It was business. So I gave it back to the bank. I walked away from it. I've been given 10 free houses that people didn't want for the same reasons that I just mentioned. They walked away and gave me the house. There's a, a guy in Houston 
that one of my students is working with right now. He walked away from his house. He's in California right now. The house in Houston is vacant. He's no longer going back. The reason why he's not attached to the house, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to understand this and you've got to take advantage of the situation. That's COVID-19, and it's going to be like this for a few more years. People are going to have to make a decision. They're going to be, real estate's going to be in a free fall. People are going to make different decisions. Some people are going to want to keep their home, which you have the answer. If you're one of my students and I'm training you, you will have the answer to help people that want to keep their home. Now, I'm going to tell you about a student that I just started. His family has three houses. Okay. Now, if a person wants to sell their home, if you're one of my students right now, today, and you've been a student and you're moving forward with me, there are people that will sell you the house that don't want to sell with the realtor. They don't want to sell with a realtor because the realtor's got to put a sign in the front yard and they're going to do what realtors do. They're going to have open houses and all these people are going to want to come in, but it's COVID and you don't want all those people. Those motivated sellers do not want people in their house bringing COVID into their house on a tour. So everything's done virtually. So if you're in a position right now and you're a real estate investor, especially being trained by me, all you have to do is put the word out that you buy houses and those sellers will call you and you can close as is in any condition in 14 days less if you got the money that motivated seller doesn't have to deal with a realtor they don't have to pay the realtor six percent you'll take it as is and the reason you take it as is because it might have been a loved one that passed away. And that loved one has a house full of stuff and personal items that's cluttered. It's to the ceiling with stuff. That family member doesn't want to take the time to hire somebody to go in, clean it all out, get it all fixed up, and then list it with the realtor and lose 6%. That's time and money. And let's say this motivated seller lives in Kentucky and the house is in California. That person doesn't want to move to California to supervise a fix and flip like they do on HGTV. They just inherited the property and nine times out of ten, the only thing they want is the money. You can have all the belongings. There might be an old classic Mercedes in the garage. And they don't care or they haven't seen it. The Mercedes, Mercedes comes with the house. They're not interested in coming here. They're not interested in getting on no plane to catch COVID, come look at some construction and real estate project that they have no idea about, having some realtor list the property, have people coming in the house looking at all their, their relatives' belongings. They just want to be done with it. That person will sell you their house if they know that you're in the business of buying houses. And that's what I'm teaching you if you're one of my students. Some people will just walk away. I've, I've mentioned it to you guys again. I was one. I walked away. There's other people out there that will walk away from their houses and give them to you and ask you for no money. They'll just hand you the keys and say bye. But you guys have to understand this is what we do as real estate investors. This is why I say COVID-19 and the six D's is America's next big financial opportunity for real estate investors in the next five years. So you, if you're listening to me right now, you need to call me 916-470-3869 so I can show you the framework for how all this works so that you can build some wealth for you and your family. So you can get out of debt, pay cash for your loans, pay cash for your, your kid's college education, buy a home, pay off the home you're in. That's what real estate will do for you. It'll pay cash for your next family vacation. 
Let real estate, one of my favorite saying is, why not let real estate pay for everything you want out of life? Wow. Again, wow. COVID-19 and the six Ds is the new way to make money in real estate. It's new to you because you've never heard it before. It's new to you because they don't have this <clears throat> excuse me, on HGTV. It's new to you because no one has told you about this because it's a very small percentage of people like myself that know this business. And I'm going to show you some very, very powerful testimonials as to the power of buying notes from banks, buying from banks. Okay, buying notes is the most, the world's most powerful real estate investment strategy that's ever been developed. It's been around since day one. Somebody need to borrow some money. They went to the bank, got a loan. The bank secured that with the property so that they can make get payments and get rich. That's been day one. And here we are in 2020 and it's still in effect. I'm going to tell you about uh, three houses. I had a student join my coaching program. Might as well cover it now. He joined my coaching program over the weekend, had a little conversation with him, and he says, Terry, my mom's facing foreclosure. I said, okay, guess what? Your education starts immediately, and it's with the house that you're living in, because if you don't get that fixed, you're going to be homeless. So, <clears throat> had a conversation with the young man, come to find out their family owns three houses. Okay, They have one in New York. That's worth about $350,000. They have one in Florida that's worth $160,000. Then they have another in Florida that's worth $233,000. Okay? The son, again, wants to be a real estate investor. I think this is probably the first time he's had a conversation with his parents about the real estate that they own. So again, we're starting first day with him going back through to try to figure out how we can help him keep the home that he lives in so he doesn't go homeless. Now, I don't know what would happen if I wouldn't have come along. I don't even know if I can help him. But from a conversation with someone joining my coaching program, my 1495, I am now involved with three houses one in New York and two in Florida. Now, the one in Florida that's worth $160,000, the parents don't want it. Listen to me, you guys. I'm on the phone talking to the son the first day. The second day, first day I told him to go get some information for me. Second day, he's talked to his parents and they said they don't want a house in Florida. They want to keep the other two. So what am I doing? I'm teaching that young man how to build wealth. I'm teaching him how to help homeowners face a foreclosure, keep their homes. And again, his education is starting with his own home. He's going to learn how to help people in foreclosure keep their home, which is going to be the answer to a lot of people's problems during and after COVID-19. Why? Because people are dealing with death, debt, divorce and distress. I wish someone could have helped me on my first home when I lost it to foreclosure. Okay, my first home that I bought, it was a fixer upper, it was ugly. I bought it and refinanced it, spent the money, couldn't pay the property taxes. That was devastating my first house. That was the house again that I've told you guys about where I made my daughter in the shop that I worked in because I was a carpenter. I made her the first crib. I put her in that crib. She was so small. I rocked it back and forth. I was so proud of myself for making that crib, but I lost that house to foreclosure. At that time, I wish someone would have came and helped me understand the foreclosure process because the banks definitely didn't talk the language. I didn't understand a word they were saying. I don't even know if we had a conversation to tell you the truth. 
But I wish there was an expert like you, Terry Bontemps. I could have helped you meet Terry Bontemps, figure out that mess I had gotten myself into. Help me at least give me some, some, some comfort and peace of mind, telling me it's going to be all right, instead of letting my emotions take off and wreck me, make me lose weight. Come on, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on now. I ain't the only one out here that's got some issues. Everybody got issues doing COVID, y'all. Come on. I know you're trying to hold back. Think you all cool, but everybody got some issues. Everybody got some financial anxiety. There's some things going on we don't know nothing about because we've never faced COVID-19. And we don't even have a, a cure for it yet. It seems like it just keeps, you know, going. It just spin, keeps spinning, 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 spinning with, I can say, no relief. I can't see any relief coming. Not anytime soon. Again, COVID-19, you guys, that's life. That's the opportunities available for real estate investors today and for the next few years. Now, what happened? Okay, the, the mother and the father were trying to find work. So they decided to leave New York and then they went to Florida. They wanted to get away from New York. They wanted a slower pace of life. Got to Florida, couldn't find work. Right, so they come back to New York. They can't make payments on two houses. They can't make payments on two houses. That's another thing that may be happening in COVID-19. People are adjusting. Maybe someone is a landlord. They bought a new house. They're renting out the old house. Maybe the tenant in the old house is not making payments. So if the tenant in the old house is not making payments, then they're not able to make payments on their new house. Maybe they're going to have to make a business decision to walk away from the new house and go back to the previous house, which may be paid off. Or it's got some lower monthly payments. Hey, they got to survive COVID-19. Let's say again, this landlord, they've been furloughed from their job. The job is never coming back again. Can you see What's happening? The financial anxiety that can be happening. And guess what? The real estate is in free fall. The problem is they don't know about you. You didn't put any marketing out. You didn't let anybody know you're a real estate investor. You've been sitting here watching my live streams and calling yourself a real estate investor, talking the real estate investor game, but nobody knows you're in business. You don't have a sign out that says we buy houses. You're not like McDonald's. McDonald's has the big golden arches, and when you drive by it, your car automatically swings in to get a, a Happy Meal and a fish sandwich and a Coke. That's what McDonald's does to you. That's some serious branding. But what about your brand? What about your I Buy Houses brand? I know Terry Bunton's brand is working. I'm everywhere. I'm on YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Roku, Amazon, and Apple. I'm live streaming. I'm everywhere. I'm talking about what I do because I love what I do. People know I'm in the house buying business. Right. So I'm talking to this young man about real estate and lo and behold, bam, three houses pop up. Woo -wee. Three houses on a phone call from a person I don't even know that's in New York. I'm in California. That's virtual, y'all. That's called virtual. How did that work? Because I was out promoting and marketing myself, trying to get people involved in my platform, which I think is the best platform out there. And if you're involved with me, congratulations. If you're not, you're sitting there watching. You're just watching money go by. You're stepping over the, the, the dimes, stepping over the quarters to get to the dimes, whatever that saying is. You're watching. I got people, man, all the time. Terry, I've been watching you for six years. Terry, I've been watching you for eight years. Terry, I've been watching you for six months. For what are you, what are you watching me for? You ain't making no money watching me. You're not getting any wealthier watching me. I, I appreciate the fact you want to watch me and you're looking at me. Hey, that ain't the key. The key is to take some action because somebody out there, somebody out there is going to be able to take advantage of this, put them and their family in a better financial position during this COVID-19. Watch for what? You know my number by heart. <laughs> Terry Bontemps, you hot today, my man. 
Oh, I'm just getting warmed up, you guys. You know my number's 916-470-3869. And I've been talking about these returns on my students' investments. I've been giving you some ridiculous numbers of what my students have been able to achieve just by me being their coach and teaching them. Teaching them about the most powerful wealth building tool in the world, which is note buying, which very few people know anything about. All right. Y'all see the topic up there. It says, in order for you to build and have some wealth, some wealth, just come on, just get a portion. Just get 1%. Now, I know some of you are like, hey, no, Terry, I want to get more. I want 50, 60, 70. That's good. But I'm talking about the people out there that are skeptics. You're sitting up here looking at me, Terry, you're a skeptic. And how many TV shows do they have on HGTV? They're on all day. Seven days a week, HGTV's got a house flipping show or some real estate related show on how somebody's doing something with real estate. And the only reason they got that sh program on the show is because it makes money. And it shows you how you can make money. So I'm wondering, I'm asked this question, if you're not in real estate, why not? More millionaires have been created in real estate, 90% of this country's millionaires created their wealth in real estate. My question again, why aren't you in real estate? It can't be because you don't have the education. Because I've been telling you about education, teaching you about education. But education ain't alone is not enough. You got to get educated. But I've got students that are educated because I've educated them, been with me forever and ever and ever, but they ain't taking no action. They ain't let nobody know out there that they're in the real estate. They ain't let nobody know, hey, I, I can help you keep your home. Or I can buy your home. Or I can give you a little moving money if you don't want your home. Or why don't you just walk away and let me take care of the property? And I think that's what this person wants to do on the house in Florida. The mom has already said, hey, w once it's done, we don't want to make no more payments. Listen to me, you guys. I ain't talked to the mom, but the son told me this. Once it's sold, we don't want to make no more payments. Now, I didn't ask no questions. I just asked, you know, the basics. But that response came back. So what does that response mean to you? If you're not in the real estate like I am, you, that went right over your head. But what I heard is, hey, Terry, this is what I heard. Now, this ain't what you said. What I heard was, hey, I want to be done with this thing. And that to me is, okay, Terry, there's only a couple things that can happen. You can pay her to buy the house. You can just buy the house outright. You can give her some, some money and she can sign the deed over to you. You know, maybe give her a few thousand dollars. Who knows? I haven't looked at it. Give her a few thousand dollars and then bam, she's she's done. She don't want to make no more payments. And I think there's a tenant in the property. Again, I don't know if the tenant's paying or not. But one of the properties in Florida has a tenant. Maybe both of them have tenants. I would think both have tenants and maybe this one ain't paying. Maybe, you know not emotionally tied there's you're breaking even or losing money on this one or the third option is hey terry you can just have it i don't care what you do with it i wipe my hands from it and i don't care what happens those are three choices i can buy it outright i can give her a little money and she can give me the deed or she can just give me the deed and i'm done those are my three choices that's the way I look at real estate, you guys. And then at that point, at that point, once we get to the point where she wins, I win, then it's my job, my responsibility to figure out how I'm going to make money from it. Now, if you don't know, i got 11 ways that I teach to make money with the house. I'm going to come back to 11 ways, but I'm going to go back to the title again today. In order for you to build and have wealth, you have to know how wealth is built. 
In order for you to build and have wealth, you have to know how wealth is built. Because a lot of us, we weren't taught about wealth and how to accumulate it. Right? Come on now. <laughs> oh, Terry, don't go there. Don't go there, Terry. I got to go there. When we grew up, when we went to school, did they teach us how to build and have wealth when we went to school? I don't know about the school you went to. I might, I might, I might. The closest I think to that was I, I had a, a class. It was a construction class on how to be a carpenter. Now that I think back on it, it was called a regional occupational program. It was called ROP. During the school day, I would be transported to a construction site. And I learned how to be a carpenter in high school. I'm kind of thinking that taught me how to build and have wealth to a certain extent. And the reason why I say that, because a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine had a Camaro that was really nice. <laughs> Y'all know me, I got a 68 old school that's nice. Wow, looking back on this, my good friend had a Camaro and I asked him when that's his man, wow, that's a nice car. How did you get it? What do you do? I always ask that question. How'd you get it? And what do you do? I want to know what you do. And he says, hey, I'm a carpenter. You know, I'm a, I build houses. I said, well, she. I looked up to him. I liked him. I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. That's called a role model. As soon as he said that, I said, look, you don't know it, but you're my role model. I ain't told you, but you're my role model. I want one of them Camaros. And you told me you were a carpenter. So, boom, I went back to school and I knew we had a program. I checked and we had construction. So part of my high school senior year, I would go to this construction site and I learned how to be a carpenter. I got a certificate when I graduated. Boy, was I proud because I was a carpenter. <laughs> I was a real live carpenter. Boy, you talk about a dream come true. I got out of high school. I went to the first construction site in my neighborhood. Knocked on the door. Guy comes to the door. I said, hey, look, I'd like to have a job as a carpenter. The guy says, you're hired. What nobody, nobody, they hadn't even built any houses. I was the first person hired at that site. And I don't know how many houses they built. Uh, I can imagine they built five, six, seven, eight hundred houses. Wow, was those some good days. And then I end up going to school to get my journeyman's certificate. So I became a certified journeyman carpenter just because of my buddy that had a Camaro and told me he was a carpenter. So that gave me some concept of how to build and have wealth. I, I, I made some good money as a carpenter. I mean, good money. For a kid just out of high school, I was living large. Matter of fact, I can remember I, I bought a Camaro. Brand new Camaro off the showroom floor, but I don't know what it is about these Camaros now that I think about it. <laughs> but again, you guys, you have to know how wealth is built. My parents, they raised me great, but guess what? They didn't teach me about wealth. They didn't say, hey, Terry, in order for you to have some wealth, in order for you to be an entrepreneur, in order for you to be a business person, and in, in, in order for you to, you know, have something other than a job, you need to do this, 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 and that, and do this, this, and that. I didn't get that education. I don't know about you. So, who taught you? Who's taught you how to have wealth and how to build it? And if it hasn't happened, most likely if you've tried to open up a business, if you tried to be an entrepreneur, you tried to buy real estate, it was probably luck. It was probably luck that got you where you're at. And some hard work, of course, and some determination and some grit. I won't take that away from you, but did you have a system? Did you have something that helped you navigate the waters of being an entrepreneur and being in business? Okay, because they say, what is it, the first three years? That's when, what, 70, first five years, 70% of people go out of business? And there's a reason because they didn't have any training, they didn't have any previous education, or they probably just missed it. They just missed the mark on the business. 
But see, real estate is math. And that's what I talk to you guys about is math and the process and the system so that you guys can understand how to be successful in real estate. But then on top of that, I come in and I support you 100%. I support you 100%. I teach you, coach you, train you, mentor you, and support you. What an incredible system. I make sure you're doing it right instead of guessing. All right, so... Again, note buying is the most powerful wealth building real estate investment strategy that's ever been developed. Now, I started out talking about Damon John. Damon John ran a post, a video post on Facebook. No, I'm sorry, LinkedIn. It was on LinkedIn. I read it. And it was pretty interesting. He was talking about FUBU. And he showed a lot of his video footage that he had collected over the years. I can't remember how many years it's been. And he showed a box <laughs> of stuff. And he goes, well, yeah, that's some footage, but, you know, that's not all the footage. And then he went to another area, and, and it was a box, you know, a little bit bigger box. And he goes, uh-uh, no, -uh, that ain't it. And then he finally pans up, and there's this trailer, this trailer full of tote bins and he says that's the footage and I'm like whoa and so I'm looking and he's saying you know what um, right now because of the times we're in you know uh, maybe there should be a documentary written and directed about FUBU and I'm thinking all right why not and boom the lights came on the lights came on. He says, well, you know, there should be a documentary about, you know, a uh, business, um, about uh, people branding themselves to build multi-billion dollar businesses. I said, okay, I'm in agreement with that, too. I said, you know, I've seen a great movie called The Banker. You know, I don't know if it was on a billion dollar, you know, whatever you're shooting for. But, boy, that was a damn good movie, The Banker. And I said, you know what, man, I can kind of relate to that. And then I said, well, shit, why not real estate? Boom, like him and says, why not real estate? Why not show a documentary with the same things you're talking about? Yeah, that's cool with FUBU, but, you know, I'm not into FUBU. I'm into real estate. I said, well, shoot, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I would already did that. I would already made a documentary. I said, where's my documentary at? Docker, doc, documentary at? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's on YouTube. I said, wait a minute. My real estate of 40 years is locked in a vault on YouTube. It ain't locked, but I don't know why I put that in there. It's on YouTube. It's in my files. It's in my hard drives. My 40 years of real estate, my ups and downs, my decision making, the losses, the wins. I'm looking back and I'm going, whoa. And then I said, wait a minute, Terry. You're talking about the world's number one real estate investment strategies that very few people know about. Go back, Terry, and check your history. And I went, oh, my gosh. Hey, I made my own short documentary in 2012. I'm like, uh-oh, I think I need to pull that out. And I think I need to distribute it. I don't need to produce it because I've already paid for it and produce it. And if you don't know it, I've got a mobile app. I've got two mobile apps that I've developed. That's that's where my my history is at. That's where my lessons. That's where my 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 information. My movie. It's all stored in my mobile apps and on YouTube in my files. And I'm like, whoa! And I already started a documentary. It's about thirty minutes long. And I said, you know what? I need a network to distribute it. That's what Damon John was trying to do. Hey, a network, come on, pick up my documentary. And I went, wait a minute, why come I can't get a network to pick up my documentary? <laughs> I love dreaming big, y'all. <laughs> I love dreaming big. So I said, okay, well, wait a minute. Do I really need a network? Why don't I just put it on the internet? Use the internet. It ain't going to cost me nothing. I don't have to give up any of my uh, any of my um, rights 
And I don't have to wait around to get permission for somebody to do it. Or somebody to pick me up or somebody to give me the okay, the approval. I'm the director. I'm the starring actor. I'm telling the story about the 2008 recession. The Great Recession. I'm telling the story about it. Well, guess what? I got to go back and see how relevant it is to 2020. Because I know I discussed 2001, the 9-11 bombings, and I know I discussed what's in 2008, and I know it's going to be relevant to 2020, and I know it's going to be relevant for the rest of our lives because they say we go into recessions every so many years. And when a recession hits, that's the best time for us to be in the business that we're in dealing with COVID and the six Ds. The six Ds is an everyday business. It's not going away. Every day we're dealing with death, debt, divorce, and distress. That's my market. That's my market that I deal in, the foreclosure market and buying these notes. It never goes away. It'll be here when my grandkids are growing up. It don't stop because people are always dealing with this thing called life. And I deal with what's called real estate. And real estate is a part of people's lives. They're buying, they're selling, they're moving up, they're moving down, they're downsizing, job relocated, bankruptcy. It's always in a state of influx. So today, I'm just going to talk to you about real estate. And I'm going to leave this topic up so that you guys can look at it and kind of understand where I'm going. I'm trying to show you guys where the wealth how to build wealth and where the wealth is in real estate and why you should be getting your share of the profits. Because again, if you don't know how wealth is built, if you don't know how wealth is made, how are you going to have it? It ain't luck. Some people win the lottery, but there's a process. There's a process and some things you got to do and you got to have some grit to go out and get it. But real estate is an equal opportunity wealth builder. You don't have to have some degree. You don't have to have a whole lot of money. You could be a single mom, single dad. You ain't got to have a job. You ain't got to have credit. You don't even need to have a real estate license. You don't even need a driver's license. <sighs> what better opportunity? You can come from scratch, nothing, zilch, zero, zero. You can come from the wrong side of the tracks even. And still build some amazing wealth in real estate. My student is homeless, three years, 28 years old, flipped his first house, made $3,000. He flipped his first house. 28 years old, been homeless for three years, we're six months into COVID, and he flipped his first house. How do you understand the success, the motivation that it took for this young man to do that? See, something, he wasn't your conventional type person. You know what it took? It took grit. It took grit. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine living in my truck for three years. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on now. I'm on. You got to be shaking your head right now, looking at yourself like, wow, this guy's living in his truck. Most of us are living up under a roof with some comfortable bedding and clothing. I, I, some of us might be homeless, but tell you what, there's hope for anybody. If this young man is living in his truck for three years, we're six months into COVID, and he goes out and he flips the house and makes $3,000. He never saw the house that he flipped. Talked to the person on the phone. He never went to the title company to pick up his check. Someone brought in the check. How do you explain that? That's COVID. That's virtual right now. That's COVID-19 at its finest because he even says it. And I know for a fact now, if this was not COVID, those conditions wouldn't have never existed for him. Now, if he can do that, 
Why not you? And I know you probably got more to work with. You might be college educated. You might have the white picket fence and three kids and, you know, a wife or a husband and you got the dog and the cat, you know, and you got the nice house in the nice neighborhood. You that conventional person that you can go out and maybe realtors will sell you a house at, you know, full retail and you can buy it. But some of us got some challenges. Some of us got some issues like credit, money, you know, come on now. I ain't going to go into details. I ain't going to tell, I ain't telling nobody's business. <laughs> I ain't telling nobody busy, y'all, but let me go into this real quick here. I want you guys to understand something. Let me check my time. 826, I got to get going. Thomas Barack. I'm talking about this note by you guys. Pay close attention. You need to go back and listen to this. Thomas Barack bought Michael Jackson's note on Neverland Ranch. Thomas Barack. Last name is spelled B A R R. A C K. Thomas Barack bought Michael Jackson's note. Michael Jackson couldn't make his payments on Neverland Ranch. Thomas Barack bought the note from the bank for twenty-three million dollars. Why? Terry Bontemps, that's that business you in, aren't you? Yeah, I'm paying attention. I, I've researched this Thomas Barack. Let me tell you what I found out. Forbes magazine called Thomas Barack. The smartest investor in the world. Come on, Terry. What you trying to say? You trying to say because you're in this note buying business that you, you got some of this greatness that Thomas Barack has in him? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Preach, Terry. Come on. Give me some more, Terry. Forbes called Thomas Barat the smartest investor in the world. He is the 375th richest person in the world. Thomas Barat is the 375th richest person in the world. Now, these numbers may have changed, but this is the facts that I've got. He's estimated to be worth $1.1 billion. His hedge fund that he runs called Colony Capital has control of $34 billion of assets. What? Now, can you see why he's called the smartest investor in the world? The smartest investor in the world. Uh-oh, Terry Bontemps, what you trying to say, boy? You trying to correlate yourself of having some smarts? Wait a minute now, Terry Bontemps in this business of buying notes also. He couldn't afford Michael Jackson's note. That's a little bit too rich for his blood. But hey, I understand the concept, and maybe if I'd have been early to the party, maybe I could have maybe got some investors to put up the $23 million. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if this guy's called the smartest guy in the world, he's the 375th richest person in the world, he has an estimated worth of $1.1 billion, he owns a hedge fund called Colony Capital that has $34 million in assets, and he buys Michael Jackson's note because Michael Jackson couldn't keep his payments, he actually helped Michael Jackson keep his home. Oh! Michael Jackson never got foreclosed on because Thomas Barack bought the note and he helped Michael Jackson keep his home. Oh, Terry, don't you do that? Terry, Terry, don't you do that? Yes, I do. I do that too. Ooh-wee. Y'all better get this. Let me tell you a little bit more because I ain't finished. There's a guy called Pete Saka, S-A-C-A. -A. You probably won't see much about him, but he's a Sacramento guy. We were supposed to have this big development. Oh, it was like, it was big. I mean, it, it was the biggest thing to come to Sacramento. They built a big old hole in the ground. They was going to start this construction. It was humongous. This was years ago. Can't remember how many years. Well, guess what? Pete Saka defaulted on the loan. And guess what? The bank sold the note. Oh my gosh, OMG, Terry, they sold the note. Yes, what'd they sell it for? I don't know. When I was doing the research, I knew the number, and I knew the person that bought it, and I sent that person a note and said, hey, great job, I understand what you just did, but if you ever decide to sell the note, give me a call. It was like, oh man, I was full of myself. I couldn't, I couldn't pay for it, but I just appreciated the fact that I knew what happened. I watched 
the money transfer. You guys can't see it. When the note was sold, there was a transfer of wealth. And that's what I'm into. Buying that note to transfer the wealth over to the bank of Terry Bond tips. How about the banker movie? Come on. That's my movie, y'all. The banker. Mm, Samuel Jackson and, 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 and Bernard Mackey. Man, best movie ever. If you ain't seen it, go see it. Let me tell you the short, short of it. It's about these two African-American businessmen. These two guys are hungry for real estate. They, uh, uh, Bernard Garrett was a shoe shine boy, and the businessmen would come over, and he'd shine their shoes, and he, they would talk about business and real estate. And Bernard, as a young boy, would write down all the formulas like I teach my students. And he saved them in a book. And as he grew older, that's what he wanted to be. He wanted to be a businessman. He wanted to be a real estate mogul. He wanted to own properties. He wanted to own banks. Big thinker, big thinker, called the banker. Boom. Then he goes out and they buy the largest building in downtown Los Angeles in the 60s. Woo-wee! 1960, they bought the biggest, tallest bank in downtown Los Angeles called the Bankers Building. They was rolling in the money. The reason he bought the building was because he went to that building to get a loan to buy a piece of real estate and the banker turned him down. Y'all didn't hear me. Come on, y'all didn't hear me. Bernard Garrett, Anthony Mackey went to buy a piece of real estate and the banker wouldn't give him a loan. <laughs> Anthony Mackey, Bernard Garrett walked out of that bank. He looked back and you knew it was on. You knew it was on at that point. He decided to buy that building so that all those bankers in that building would pay him rent. Ownership. Woo-wee. <laughs> Is that payback or what? I'm going to buy your building. You're going to rent from me because you didn't give me a loan. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. That's called the banker. And in the banker movie, you guys, the banker movie, there was $2 million in loans, 200 loans that Anthony Mackey and Samuel Jackson, they flipped they flipped $2 million in loans. There was 200 loans. They flipped it for a $189,000 flip fee. They made $189,000 flipping a bulk portfolio of notes. Now, in the end, I think this is one thing that might have tripped them up. Okay? Because someone felt that these guys didn't deserve what they had earned and so they wanted to take it so they found a loophole and I think there was some discrepancy in getting that much money for not doing anything that's called the banker and what I like about the banker is it reminds me of my program I have right now called bank foreclosure millionaire the word bank is in the title bank not a real estate investor with houses, although they say the banking is the right hand of real estate in the movie, but a bank position. That's the kind of position I want to be in, the bank. Okay. Then my guy Darius, my guy Darius, he found a bank in Oakland, California with 174 first loans that were non-performing. 174 loans that were non-performing. The bank was asking $40 million, $40 million for these loans. I got involved. I had a hedge fund that I was working with. They had bought so many loans. They had purchased millions of dollars of loans. They had the capital to buy these $40 million worth of loans. So we put them together. The hedge fund says, hey, look, 
for that $40 million package that you have, we're willing to give you $22 million. We're going to put $2.5 million in escrow to show you that we're serious. Y'all listening to me? I'm talking about this power of the notes and the reason why I need to make a documentary about this process. Darius and myself, if that deal would have went through, our flip fee would have been $220,000. Just by finding a $40 million package of 174 loans that the bank had and Darius and myself in the middle passing it on to a hedge fund. We didn't need money, credit, a job, a real estate license. We didn't need the white picket fence. We didn't need a college degree. We didn't need a driver's license. We didn't need a real estate license. We just needed our intelligence and some grit. And that's what we brought to the table. I brought the grit and the intelligence. Darius did the work. Now, those 174 loans that the hedge fund was trying to buy for $22 million, if they would have bought all 174 loans, the average house price that they would have bought at is $126,436.78 per house. How do I know that? Because I got the notes right here by me. I did the math. Now, I talked about the banker where they had 200 loans. Okay? 200 loans. The value of those loans was $2 million. So that was an average of $10,000 per house. But then, you guys, you got to remember, the average price was $10,000 a house. But you got to remember, that was back in the 60s. I had to even think about that. I'm like, what could you have bought for $10,000 in the 60s? I'm like, wait a minute, Terry. Your first house didn't cost nothing but $32,000. And that was 1981, 82? My first house in eighty in eighty one eighty two was thirty two thousand dollars. So I'm, I can imagine, in the sixties, well, you could buy a house for ten thousand dollars. Isn't that something? Think about it, you guys. We're in twenty twenty right now. Go all the way back to houses worth ten thousand dollars. How many of us would have bought a whole bunch of them back then? <laughs> ten thousand dollar house. Anyway, let's move it on. Keep it real. Now I've talked about myself. Forty thousand dollars in one hour on one house. 40,000 profit in one hour. That generated a 54% ROI on my investment. I invested $10,000 to buy a note on a house. I didn't buy the house. Wasn't interested in that. Plus, that house wasn't so, was for sale. That owner wasn't selling that house. Regardless of who it was, she wasn't selling. But I took an interest in the property. I bought a piece of the note. It was old 40. I bought it for 10. Got me a 54% ROI. I received four or five different paychecks on that house. Four or five different paychecks. I had never done that before. And I'm like, wow, look at the power of real estate. Look at the power of buying notes from the bank. You telling me Terry Bonds is a guy that only has a high school graduation, a, a, only a high school diploma, didn't go to college? can do that? Terry Bonders, you can work with banks? I'm like, woo-wee. Yes, I can. I'm loving it. Been doing it since 2001. All over the United States. California, Nevada, Arizona, Illinois, and New York. I think I got all six. I might have said five. California, Nevada, uh, Arizona, New York, Illinois, and Florida. There we go. We got all six now. That was a 54% ROI, and he gave me five different paychecks. Anybody out there is a real estate investor. Gotten five different paychecks, five different exit strategies on one deal. That's power. I also bought my third, a third note. What I mean by a third note is it was in third position. There was a first loan, a second loan, and a third loan. I was a third loan. Back then, people was telling me I was crazy for doing this. They were telling me I was crazy for buying second loans. But man, I'll tell you what. Woo! It worked. And it worked good. I got a 78, 768% ROI 
768% ROI on my first note that I bought and I didn't even know what I was doing. It was just plum luck. No, it wasn't plum luck. You know why? It's because I listened. I told you guys about my buddy that had the Camaro. And I said, how'd you get the Camaro? He said, I got the Camaro because I'm a carpenter. And I went out and I became a carpenter. And I went to a seminar, a real estate seminar. And the instructor said, hey, look, I've been so successful at real estate. And I said, good, that's what I want to hear. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. And I said, good, that's what I want to hear. Here's my credit card. I'm in. He says, you can have something nice in life. I said, I'm buying. How much does it cost? He ain't gave me the price yet. He says, you can buy yourself a new car. You can buy yourself a new house, pay off your old house. You can go on family vacations. Oh, man. He said, you can put your kids through college. You can live that wonderful life. Have a little money in the bank. Go to Hawaii if you want. I'm like, sold. Come on, man. How much is it going to cost me? Because I know it's going to be expensive because you keep teasing me here. Come on, get to it. <laughs> I ran to the back of the room with my five credit cards, y'all, ready to pass, ready to pass this test. I'm ready. I want to be a real estate investor. <laughs> I laugh at it now, and I have fun with it. Glad I did it, because he had said, "Look, if you buy these notes from the bank, it'll get you into the back door of owning the real estate." And I'm like, okay, whatever you said, I know there's a back door in the house, so I'll figure it out. Why don't you just go through the front door? He said, well, the front door, that's where everybody goes through. He said, those are all the people that the realtors bring to the house. They bring them through the front door. He said, you never know, realtors don't never go through the back door. <laughs> Terry, you ought to stop. He didn't say all that. No, I just made all that up, but it makes sense. He said, Terry, don't go through the front door. He said, go through the back door, buy the note, and you could end up owning the property. I said, okay. It makes sense to me. You said it. You the man. Let me go back to Sacramento. I flew. Couldn't wait to get back to Sacramento. All my search of looking for houses, looking for real estate, trying to find the motivated sellers, looking at all these houses that might have a little problem with them that look bad. I'm knocking on doors. Hey, my name is Terry Bontes. I'm a real estate investor. I buy and sell houses. I see that you're in foreclosure. Do you need my help? I just kept knocking and kept Hey, it's Terry Bond Timpson. I'm a real estate investor. I buy and sell houses. I, I, I buy and sell houses and I, I, and I notice you're in foreclosure. Do you need my help? I kept doing it, kept doing it, never gave up, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. I found this one property. Luckily for me, they were selling their loans, so it was a pretty easy transaction. I offered them $1,200, $1,200, $1,200. They accepted. For a whole year, you guys, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I had forgot what that guy said, so I didn't do nothing. I was scared. I sat on it. I would have just, if they wouldn't have called me, I would have never called them. But guess what? When you own a lien on the property, when the house is sold, all the lien holders get contacted. So I'm a lien holder. I didn't even know I was a lien holder. I didn't even know that's what I was doing. A lot of this came from just doing it. Like Nike says, just do it. I, I couldn't explain it. I got the books and the tapes and, you know, I got on the plane and I was listening to it on the way home. But I got here and I'm like, okay, I better go do something. I just spent the money. Title company calls me and says, hey, look, send us a payoff. Tell us what you're owed. I go, what? Okay, explain to me again. She said, you owe, you're owed some money. I said, well, I don't even know how to figure it out. She said, bring the paperwork in. We'll figure it out for you. Okay. $9,200. Now, let me tell you all again. I invested $1,200, got $9,200 back. That is a 768% ROI for my note, first note deal that I didn't even know what I was doing. Come on, can anybody tell me they're making that type of returns on the money you have invested? Now again, I made 54% on the, on the property that I did where I made the 40,000 one hour. Now I just did 768% on a $1,200 investment. My first one, I didn't know what I was doing. You know I'm starting to, okay. I like this business. You mean I ain't got to do no repairs? I ain't got to fix? I ain't got to paint? I ain't got to deal with tenants? I ain't got to deal with trash? I ain't got to deal with none of that. I'm not going to Home Depot, and all I do is get a check in the mail or directly deposit, and I, I get a check for doing nothing? Except being in the bank? I says, whoa! Man, I'm wondering why come more people aren't doing this. I'm wondering why other, well, I'm wondering why they even got HGTV shows on. 
Because with HGTV, you can see, you can see how things are done. You can see the construction process and the realtors and the carpenters and the plumbers and everybody that's involved. But the bank, you can't see what the bank does. The bank just, they have this big old building. That's all you know, you got big old building, got lots of money, and people go in there, they put their money in the bank, they take it out, they transfer all that good stuff. But in the real estate side, all the bank does is they wait for a payment every 30 days from landlords, from homeowners. I go, that's an interesting way to look at real estate. Let me keep doing it. So as we keep evolving, hey, I told you about my guy, Ron. Ron did the commercial deal. Ron made $1.2 million of profit in one hour doing what I taught him about buying notes from bank. He did a commercial building. Oh, my gosh. Tell him, Terry, you telling me this thing works. Anything real estate related. It could be a mobile home park. It could be a marina. It could be a motel, a hotel. Yes, it works. You just got to decide what business you want to be in. I'm in the house business. Ron's in the commercial buildings. He already owned the commercial building. So Ron goes to the bank, says, I want to buy the building. Bank says, can't buy the building. We'll sell you the note. And Ron goes out there and scratches his head. He's like, what the heck do I know about a note? There ain't no HGTV shows on notes. There ain't no HGTV shows on notes. Let me Google. And voila, guess who he runs into? That's right, because I got my I'm in business sign out. He finds me. He sees my videos like most of you have done. He's seen the video, and he decided, okay, let me give this guy Terry Bontemps a call because, boy, he sure is talking a lot. I don't know what he's talking about. He left his phone number out, and he's doing numbers. I think he might be the guy. He looks like the real deal. I feel like I know him, trust him, and like him already. So he gets me on the line. And guess what? I teach him how to do this. And again, Ron spends $110,000 to buy a 70,000 square feet on one acre commercial building. $110,000 what he gave the bank. The property is worth 1.3, so Ron makes a 1.2 million dollar profit in one hour. Can you say ching ching? 1,090% mm, ROI. Come on, y'all. Oh man, 1,090%. So what does that mean? Why do I keep saying these ROIs? Because that's called the return on your investment. And if you ain't learned what ROI is, this is just Greek. But this is the language of real estate. You got to make a return on your investment. You put your money out there, you want to see it multiply and increase. So Ron multiplied and increased a thousand ninety times what he invested. Oh my gosh, come on, Terry, you're delivering the goods today, brother. You ain't got no fluff, you ain't got no smoke and mirrors, it's all meat and potatoes. But Terry, how do I do it? All right, look at the again. Look at the screen. In order for you to build and have wealth, you have to know how wealth is built. I'm telling you exactly how wealth is built. I'm not telling you no long story, no Toastmaster story. I hate that. I hate when somebody gets up and they've sold me on this great program. I read the reviews. I watched the movie. I'm all in. I got my popcorn. I got my Visa card ready. And then they get up there and they start telling a Toastmaster story. I said I would never do that again. I'm just going to talk about the money. I'm going to talk about how you guys can get the money in real estate. I'm not going to tell you a bunch of stories. This is how it's done. But you need the education. Who are you going to get the education from? That's why I'm, I'm doing this. I'm trying to educate you and tell you why I have value to you and how I can add some return. My guy <laughs> that's homeless for three years goes out and makes $3,000. I think we figured out his ROI. He paid me $700 to teach him. I don't even think he paid all of it, to tell you the truth. I think he still owes me a couple more payments. I think he might have got away with a discount, but let's just make it 700 He goes out and makes $3,000, you guys. $3,000 during COVID. That's a 468% return on his money. He gives me 700 He goes out and makes 3000 how many of you do that every day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday? I'd gladly give somebody 700 bucks. That's why I whipped out my credit card. 
when they were selling the course. I said, look, I'll give you 700, but shoot, I want a million back. <laughs> I want a half a million back. I want 100,000 back. I'd just be happy with 10,000. I think I would have been happy just getting my money back. But boy, the return I've gotten is incredible. So look at the return. Give, give 700, get back 3,000. 468% return. So let me keep going. <clears throat> Holly. Holly again, $400,000 in nine months. $400,000 of profit in nine months, you guys. $400,000. Can you imagine that? Making $400,000 on a deal in nine months. And what I've been saying, and I'm going to start saying it more and more, my students are making the most money per deal currently in the country in real estate on their deals. Oh, man, Terry, that's a return on investment. I'm going to say it again. My students are making some of the most money per deal, period. Who do you think can compete against me on a student that makes $1.2 million in one hour? Ooh. I hear a lot of people tell me, man, I made 5000 flip fee and it took me a month, 30 days. That's, that's kind of like the average, 5000 in 30 days. My students are like 10 x it. 10 exit. Holly. 400000 profit in nine months. She invested $9,000 buying notes from the bank from what I taught her. She made $400,000. The cash buyer that bought that property fixed them up and sold them for $570,000. So everybody made money. Holly made four hundred thousand. She left one hundred and seventy thousand in there for the cash buyer. That cash buyer was excited to give Holly four hundred thousand dollars. Holly bought eighteen notes in ten months. One point five million dollar net worth in ten months. She borrowed one hundred thousand dollars from family and friends to buy eighteen notes. I looked at that ROI. <laughs> she borrowed one hundred thousand to buy these notes. Let's say Holly didn't have any money and no credit. She said, family, look, I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to do a real estate deal right here. I got a bank that's willing to sell 18 notes for X number of dollars. I never knew what that was. I might go back and check some of my notes. Hopefully it's in my, my, uh, my files somewhere. I got to search. She increased her net worth $1.5 million in 10 months. That's a 1,500% ROI. 1,500% ROI. Wow. Now, I'm going to go one more because what I'm doing, I'm showing you guys the power of what I teach. I'm showing you the power of the number one real estate investment strategy in the world. And it's called buying notes from banks. How do I know it works, Terry? Just look at the size of your bank. Look at their assets. Look at their, look at their, their, their spreadsheets, the value of them. Look at, look at a real estate investor. Look at a bank. Look at a real estate investor. Look at a bank. Now, I'm not saying anything wrong against a real estate investor, but look at the bank. And so, what do you want to be? Well, guess what? You can be both, because that's what I am. I'm an investor at times, and at times, I like being the bank. And if I do both, oh, that's a really good payday there. That knocks it out the park when you can do both. One more. Show called The Profit. I was talking to a student the other day and I said, hey, do you watch a show called The Profit? Because he was like, Terry, why should I join you? I said, look, dude, I'm going to just send you some money that me and my students have made on a piece of paper. You decide for yourself. I'm not no cheerleader. I'm not no big. You either see it, the value, or you don't. I, and I just talked to you guys about all these checks, all this money my students have made. So if he looks at me and says, hey, Terry, I, I don't like what you're selling, I'm going to say, great, because you know what? You don't see value, and you'd probably be a pain in the ass. Okay? reason why is my coach told me the only reason you get in real estate is to get rich. I don't know what he was looking for because I showed him numbers. I showed him numbers that I don't think nobody can deliver. Now, I might be saying a little bit too much there, nobody, but I'm going to say nobody again. I don't think nobody can show him the numbers that I just told you guys about of what me and my students are doing 
Something I've been doing for the last 19 years. This is why I got excited when Damon John started talking about, hey, look, we ought to make a documentary about FUBU. Well, hey, Damon John, guess what? Let me show you a documentary about real estate, about how I became the bank in real estate when very few people really understand that. How I've been able to help people keep their homes in the process. I've made some money. I've done some, some good. I've helped some people and made an impact on the world. I'm teaching other people how to do this. I said, boy, that's a nice story. FUBU's all right, but real estate's all right. <laughs> all right, let's get to the profit, and I'm going to call it a day because I really had some more, but I think we've been going a while. I'm going to get in here and start working on this documentary. I will be in the chat. I'll be in the chat for the second part of this, okay? I'll be in the chat. So if you want to come back and you go, Terry, man, that math was too much. Break those numbers down. I want you guys to get your calculator, bring your calculator with you, and I'm going to break it down how exactly we got all these numbers. Because, see, I know how to build wealth. I've built wealth. And if you don't know how and you want to learn, I think I'm the best person for you. Why? Because I mentor you. I coach you. I train you, support you 100%. I educate you. You got to take some action, and that's something I can't control. People always ask me, hey, Terry, if I join your program, will I make a million dollars the next day, and will it fall out of the sky and hit me in the head? I go, uh, let me think about it. No. I said, you got to put in some work. Terry Bontis makes it sound easy because he's got the system down. He knows what he's doing. He's proven, battle-tested, starred, kicked, punched, <laughs> knocked out, knocked down. It got back up and says, hey, I want my dream. They said the American dream, I want it. I'm not going to be denied. I got grit and determination. I'm going to keep going. I ain't never stopping. I got a lot of people that are still looking at me going, man, that guy's still talking. <laughs> well, somebody turn him off. I'm tired of him talking about all those numbers and all those checks. Why? Oh, man, you make it sound too easy. Well, get it, it is easy for me. But for you, you got to get out here and you got to create your own world. You got to create your own path. That's my path that I've lived. You got to go out and do your thing. So, again, the show's called The Prophet. The guy's name is Marcus Lemonis. I think that's the way he says his last name. This guy goes out. And he invests in other people's business. He takes his own hard money and invests in a part of a business, and he gets a portion of it. It's a great show. It's something like Shark Tank. If you ain't watching Shark Tank, Shark Tank is another show you should watch because you got to know your business, and you got to have some sales, and you got to have a system because when you go in there and ask for money, oh, man, whew, the Shark Tank ain't no joke. They want to know that they're going to be able to make their money back that they give to you. So they send you through a process. Anyway, the profit. Marcus Lemons is negotiating with a bank. The bank is owed $240,000 for the property. $240,000 what the bank is owed for the property. Now, this property came with a loan. Someone took out a loan and they used three other buildings as collateral to get the loan. Hey, I pledge I will pay you back if you give me $240,000. We we'll use that example. If you give me $240,000, I got three pieces of property. I'll pledge that as good faith to prove to you that I'm going to pay you back. All right, so Bank A has this and the owner is defaulted on the loan. The owner's not making payments, y'all. Did you hear what I said? So Marcus Lamoni said, hey, look, here's what I'll do. I'll give you $240,000, exactly what you're owed, not to buy the property, not to buy the property, not to buy the property, but buy the note. Come on, Terry, you're losing me now. You're losing me with all this, Terry. I don't understand what you're talking about. He offered to buy the note for $240,000. He said, I'm going to take over your position. You just sell me the note for whatever you're owed, which is $240,000. I'm going to give that to you. And the bank says, that's called par. In case you guys are, some of you out there that are experts on notes and you've been kind of doing your own thing and learning about the note, but it's called par. 
What that means, you're paying exactly what it's worth. So Terry, come on now, you've been telling us to buy stuff at a discount. Why would somebody pay par exactly what it's owed? I don't think y'all was listening earlier. Y'all missed it. Because there's three other buildings tied to that note. Oh, wait a minute, Terry. Wait a minute. Are you saying that if they buy the note, if Marcus buys that note, not only will he get that commercial building, but there's a possibility those other three buildings, yeah, yep, 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 now, come on. Now, come on now, Uncle Terry. They're getting it. They're getting it, Terry. They're getting it, Uncle Terry. Woo-wee. Oh, man, that's nice. So the bank sells for 240000 This is the way Marcus thinks. He says, you know what? If worse comes to worse, I can sell those three buildings, whatever they are, for $100,000. And if I can get $100,000 for selling those three buildings, then the 240 that I paid the bank, that's now reduced to 140,000 out of my pocket. Oh, what a smart move. What a smart move by buying the note. And if you want to check my facts, it's called the profit Marcus Lemonis and green tea green tea go google it go youtube it's up there you gotta buy it on youtube for like five dollars all you gotta invest is five dollars to see marcus do what i just said marcus is a, a businessman he has a net worth of nine hundred million dollars nine hundred million dollars and guess what? He's using the same, he used the same strategy that Terry Bontemps has been talking to you about. That Terry Bontemps is going to teach you so that you can go out and do it in the real world. Come on now, you guys. I just explained why Terry Bontemps should have a documentary on real estate especially note buying. Did I just throw down some serious facts that maybe you guys didn't know nothing about? Oh, come on. And I already got 30 minutes documentary already built. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute now. This is something people need to know about. They need to hear about. It's an excellent business to be in. So that's why I got excited reading about Damon John. He just fired on the thought, Terry, make a documentary. And that's why I'm telling you guys right here. That's why I explained all this and I talked about all these different people that are doing what I'm trying to teach and show you. They've done it. It's over. Done. It works. And I've given you the name so you can go back and research and double check. Now, I get to go to work. So, again, today was in order for you to build and have wealth, you have to know how wealth is built. And I just showed you. I showed you. I taught you. Now, again, real estate is math. All those ROIs. What that means is this, you guys. When you're in the no business, the first thing I want to know, there's four things I got to know when I'm in the no business. And it should be for you if you're into real estate. First thing I need to know is, I need to know my profit. What's the minimum amount of money I want to make? I, I, that's coming off. What is my profit? The next thing I need to know is, well, how much do I have to invest? How much do I have to invest to get that amount of profit? Right? We can put this in order if you want. Number one is, what's my profit? Number two is, how much money do I got to invest? What do I got to take out of my pocket? Okay, I talk about McDonald's fish sandwich. McDonald's sells a fish sandwich for a dollar. They got 80 cents of cost, labor, the bun, the meat, the sauce. The commercial they got to run on TV. When they sell it for 80 cents, 20 cents is left over for McDonald's to put in their pocket. Well, what does that mean, Terry? See, for the, the person that don't understand investing, that don't mean a whole lot. They made 20 cents. Big deal. Oh, yeah. It's a big deal because McDonald's have a lot of these franchises. They're selling for a lot of money. So that, that process, that system works. So what does that mean, Terry? It means this with ROI terms. It means that McDonald's just made 25% return on their money. Terry, you got to explain that further. Well, you're going to have to attend my second part because I'm running out of time. 
They make 25% return on investment. And then they have a 20 cents or 20% profit margin. So for every McDonald's fish sandwich they sell, they know they're going to make 20% or 20 cents for every fish sandwich. And they're happy with that. That's 25% ROI. That's how built, wealth is built owning a McDonald's franchise and selling fish sandwiches. And every item that McDonald's has on that menu, I guarantee you they know what their profit percentage is and their profit margin is. McDonald's can click a button and they say, guess what? For everything we have on the menu, we on an average 25% profit margin and we're going to make 30% ROI. For every dollar that comes in the door, every dollar that's spent on the menu, McDonald's is going to make 25 cents for every dollar. A million dollars comes in, okay, do the math. McDonald's is tight, precise. That's why them Golden Arches franchises sell for what they do. That's why you got to go to McDonald's University. That's how my real estate business is. I'm precise. I'm buttoned up. My T's are crossed. My eyes are, I'm sorry, my eyes are dotted. My T's are crossed. Man, I'll, I'll, man, I'll put some numbers on a piece of paper on real estate, and I'm going to show you guys that one day also. I got eight different ways of looking at a house, how I'm going to make money. I can show you 11 ways to make money, but I take one house and I cut it into eight pieces to try to figure out how I'm going to make profit from it. Ooh, that's too much math for me, Terry. <laughs> but that's what you got to do if you want to be in the business. All right, so hey, you know, that does it. I hope you guys have learned something. Um, I can't wait to take this and cut it up and try to make me a little documentary. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to show that documentary on the internet. Hopefully, I can get somebody at Netflix or Hulu or Own or any of those people to say, you know what, Terry, that's just brilliant, man. <clears throat> Again, you guys, guess what? I'm going to take what I have, I'm going to develop it, design it, I produced it, I star in it, <laughs> I'm the main character. It's a one-man show. I'm going to put it on the internet. Hopefully, own <laughs> Netflix, Hulu. Any of those people out there look at it and go, you know what, Terry? We like real estate. See, Damon's trying to sell. See, Damon was selling FUBU this morning. That's what he was doing. Well, dang, if Damon's doing it, Terry, why don't you do it? You in the real estate, Damon's in the clothes. And Shark Tank and all that stuff. He got all these businesses. Damon's doing real well. He got a lot of business. Terry, why don't you get out there and you know, do the same thing? Oh, you get you a lot of business. Get you some residuals and some licensing fees. Right? Right now, because, hey, TV studios are shut down. Ain't nobody working, so they need some new content, new material. Hey, Terry, COVID is your time. You've been saying I guess it is my time. Maybe I can put some content out there, and guess what? Get me a deal. <laughs> get me a TV deal. Woo-wee. All right, y'all. That's it. That is it. This has been fun. I can't wait to go look at this. Exciting. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all later.